Hey, how you guys doing? We're back to flipped geometry here. Um, this is chapter 12, section 1, and if you've been following sequentially along, I just skipped chapters 10 and 11. We'll come back to them at the end, but I'm going to do chapter 12 before the other two. So here we are, chapter 12.1. Uh, we're looking at the beginnings of trigonometry. Isn't it exciting? God bless us, everyone. So we're entering the world of similar figures here. You have two right triangles, and they are similar if their angle measures are the same. Um, and it doesn't matter if the side lengths are, um, are the same, if as long as the angle measures are the same, then the triangles are similar. Of course, if the side lengths are the same, then they're congruent. But here we're looking at two similar triangles. And the ratio of one side on a similar triangle to the corresponding side on a similar triangle will be the same no matter which three sides you look at. So this triangle ABC over here, and triangle XYZ over here, they are similar because they have congruent angles. And so the ratio of AB to XY is going to be the same as the ratio of BC to YZ. And interestingly, the ratio of BC to, A to CA is going to be the same as the ratio of YZ to ZX. And so when you have corresponding parts of similar triangles, you can build similarity ratios. Um, not congruent statements, because these aren't congruent, but you can build similarity statements, and those will become very important to us. So here you can demonstrate that. I've got two similar triangles, triangle ABC and XYZ. Tri uh, this hypotenuse of this triangle is 10, and the hypotenuse over here is 15. So if you just use those two to build a ratio, what's the ratio of 10 to 15? What's the ratio of 2 to 3 if you were to simplify that, right? 2 times 5, 3 times 5. The ratio here of this leg is 6 to 9. It's also a ratio of 2 to 3. 2 times 3 and 3 times 3. And the ratio here, 8 to 12, 2 times 4, 3 times 4. So the ratio between the two is all the same. Now here's something that's also interesting. What's the ratio of 10 to 8? Well, this is 5 to 4, right? And here I have the same thing. Ratio of 15 to 12 is 5 times 3 and 4 times 3. Still a ratio of 5 to 4. So the ratios between the legs uh, are the same in similar triangles, and the ratios uh, of leg to corresponding leg are the same in similar triangles. That's what it means to be similar. We're going to be defining some terms here um, in just a little bit, and we're going to introduce you to your first trigonometric functions. And before you can make sense of these, you have to know your way around a triangle and some terms. Now, we've used all of these terms before, but I just want to show them to you one more time. Sorry about the wonky graphic. I grabbed it from somewhere else because the BJU produced slides didn't have this. But um, any given triangle, if I'm looking at this angle, I'm going to name this angle theta. It's just a Greek letter that makes the th sound, the TH sound. Don't be scared. It's, it's not out to get you. It's just a letter. Okay, theta. Um, is what I'm always going to call the angle I'm looking at. In this particular case, it's this angle. Now, the angle right, sorry, the side right next to the angle that is not the hypotenuse. Obviously, we know what the hypotenuse is. But the side right next to the angle that is not the hypotenuse is this guy. We call him adjacent. Now, if I were looking at this angle, this side would be adjacent because it's right next to the angle I'm looking at. Whichever leg of the triangle is next to the angle I'm investigating. Um, that's the adjacent leg of the triangle. And then across the triangle from the angle I'm looking at from theta, across the triangle is going to be the opposite leg. So if I'm looking at this angle, this is theta. Obviously, the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse. Across the triangle from it is the opposite side. And right next to it is the adjacent side. Okay, let's make sure we have those terms before we move on. All right, welcome to trigonometry. Here we go. We're introducing you to a sign. Now, sign, this is not like something that is on the street or something where you're like, hey, what's your sign? Um, we're talking here about a mathematical relationship, a ratio between the opposite side of a triangle and the hypotenuse of a triangle given a particular angle measure. So um, if I am looking at this angle of this triangle, and I know that it's 53 degrees in this particular case, I can tell you the relationship, the ratio between the opposite side of the triangle and the hypotenuse. I don't have to know um, anything else about the triangle. I don't have to know what this angle is. I don't have to know what this side is. If I know this is 53 degrees, I can tell you the ratio between the two. 
And if you give me the absolute measurement of one of them, like the hypotenuse in this particular example, I can tell you exactly how long the opposite side is. And that ratio is called the sine. And the sine is different for every angle measure. Obviously, the relationship between this opposite side and the hypotenuse is going to be different for every angle measure. So back in the old day, they had sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the other two we're going to learn. Um, tables. And when I was in geometry, we had to use tables. And we had to look through a table for the angle measure we had and then scroll across for sine and cosine and tangent. And it was a pain. Today, we have these awesome things called calculators. Of course, calculators existed when I was a kid, too. We just weren't allowed to use them um, for this. And uh, But the, the calculators today all have those sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. You'll just be able to use that. I give you permission hereby. God bless you. Use your calculator. Um, the sine of an angle is the ratio between the opposite side of the triangle and the hypotenuse of the triangle. But it's important that you get them in the right direction, that it's always opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. S-O-H. Sine opposite over hypotenuse. Um, those three letters will come to play at the end, and I'll put together a little thing that'll help you remember all of these. But the sine of a triangle is the ratio between the length of its opposite side and the, op and the length of the hypotenuse, given an angle measure of a particular angle that you're looking at. Let's look at a couple more. Cosine, just like sine, but co, right? Um, so here, if I have this angle, and I know that this is 35 degrees, I can tell you the relationship between the length of the hypotenuse and the length of this leg, the adjacent leg. Um, and and uh, so, I again, I don't need to know anything else about the triangle. If I have this angle measure, I can tell you the relationship between the two, the ratio between the two. And if you give me the absolute measurement of it, like this leg is 8, then I can tell you the absolute measure of the hypotenuse. Okay, Length of the leg adjacent to the angle divided by the length of the hypotenuse. The ratio here is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. C-A-H. Remember that, okay? Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the last one of the little triplets of trigonometry is the tangent. Um, and the tangent doesn't look at the hypotenuse at all. It looks at the opposite side over the adjacent side. So if this is my angle, if this is theta, I can tell you the relationship between the opposite and the adjacent sides. Um, and I don't have to know anything else about the triangle. I can tell you the ratio of those two things. And if you tell me, again, the absolute measure of one of them, I can give you the absolute measure of the other. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. The length of the leg opposite the angle divided by the length of the leg adjacent to the angle is the tangent of the angle. And that relationship will always be the same given a particular angle measurement. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, T-O-A. All righty. Here's a little table that summarizes all of this. Um, if I have my ABC triangle, uh, and I have segment A, segment B, and segment C. Sine of angle A, the sine of angle A, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite over the hypotenuse, or A over C, if you want to put it this way. But this is going to not be as helpful as this is, okay? Sine opposite over hypotenuse. S-O-H. Cosine of angle A is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. A, co the cosine of A, adjacent over hypotenuse, C-A-H. Tangent of angle A, tangent of angle A is the opposite divided by the adjacent, T-O-A. Why do I emphasize those syllables? Because there's this crazy sounding, it sounds like it should be some kind of oriental war cry. Um, Sokata! <laughs> Sokata! S-O-H, C-A-H, T-O-A. And if you say that really loud like a samurai warrior, you will never forget. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. Sokata! And that will help you remember sine opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. If you scream it really loud like a samurai warrior, you will never get confused. And I give you permission in class to scream out whenever you need to, to remind yourself, what is it again? Sokatoa! And then you'll get it, and it'll be fine. Okay? Moving on. All right, let's look at this example problem from your classwork. So um, they say, state the exact values and the decimal approximations of the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A. Angle A 
And to begin with, they're only giving me the hypotenuse and the opposite. So opposite of over a J, sorry, opposite over hypotenuse is the sine. S-O-H sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? And they want me to know uh, the other uh, ratios here too. So sine of angle A is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, five divided by nine, or about 0.5556, etc. Okay. Now that's the that's the sine of angle A. But in order to do cosine or tangent, I need to have this side over here, and I don't. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that is. So AC squared plus five squared equals nine squared. And so AC equals, I can rearrange things here, 25 plus, sorry, 25, and this is 81. You subtract them over. AC equals a radical 56. You can simplify radical 56 to 2 radical 14. So the side length here is 2 radical 14. Now, that's one way to do it. But you also have the cosine and tangent of, fifth, of the, uh, the angle there. You could have used that as well. So anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll go there in a little bit. Um, so 2 radical 14 is my side length for AC. I can use that then to get the tangent of A and the cosine of A. Cosine of A adjacent over hypotenuse, 2 radical 14 divided by 9. And that is about as simplified as I can get there. If I reduce it to a decimal, it's 0.8135. And then the tangent of A uh, opposite divided by adjacent. 5 divided by 2 radical 14, that's as simplified as I can get as far as the uh, irrational number goes, but I can um, turn it into a decimal equivalent, and I get 0 0.6682. Actually, I lied. You can rationalize this and put it back up at the top. Anyway, 0 0.6682 is the decimal approximation for the tangent. And this is all just opposite over adjacent. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, etc. So, um, these are ratios you will come to know and love, and you'll be singing Sokato in your sleep. Now, here's a little step into the pond of how we are going to be using these, these functions. Um, using an example of a right isosceles triangle, where both legs of this triangle are the same, they're both x, and the hypotenuse is x radical 2. Let me show you how we get decimal values for the sine or cosine or tangent of, an, of a, a triangle. Okay, The sine of 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees. Now, the cool thing about 45 degrees is 45 degrees only happens in isosceles triangles, right in right isosceles triangles, right? If this isn't 90 degrees, then this could be whatever. But if this is 90 degrees and this is 45, then this has to be 45, and you've got an isosceles triangle. So it's a good first step. Um, the sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse x over x radical 2. There's the opposite. There's the hypotenuse, x and x radical 2. Now, um, if I just say that x is 1, then 1 and 1 radical 2 reduces to just 1 over radical 2. Uh, rationalizing this, multiply both sides by radical 2, and I get radical 2 over 2. And if I divide radical 2 by 2, I get a decimal value of approximately 0 0.7071. Now, that's the relationship in this particular right isosceles triangle, and it's actually going to be the relationship in no matter what right isosceles triangle. So it's kind of cool. The sine of 45 degrees is always 0 0.7071. Pretty neat. Now, because this is an isosceles triangle, look what happens in the cosine. That's adjacent over hypotenuse, which is also x over x radical 2. So all the math is exactly the same. That's why for 45 degrees, and 45 degrees only, sine and cosine are equal to each other because at 45 degrees, you're in an isosceles triangle. Kind of neat. Tangent to 45 degrees, that is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Both of those are x. Any number divided by itself is 1. So the tangent to 45 degrees is 1, and that will be true in every 45 degree angle for a right triangle. Okay, these are just some examples. There are so many more. Let's keep walking down this road together. Let's look at our friend the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. So the sine of 30 degrees, here's my 30 degrees. The sine, remember, is opposite over hypotenuse. 30 is up here, opposite over hypotenuse. x over 2x is going to be the same as 1 over 2. And uh, you divide both sides by x, 1 over 2. And that equals 0.5. 
So the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. And it's not just 0.5 in this particular triangle. It's always true that the sine of 30 degrees in a right triangle is 0.5. So that's just another thing that is always true. Cosine of 30 degrees, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. X radical 3 over 2x divide by x. Radical 3 over 2 is approximately 0 0.8660. So cosine of 30 degrees is always going to be this. Tangent of 30 degrees is opposite over adjacent. x divided by x radical 3 divide by x. Uh, I'm sorry, just let the x's cancel. Um, and so we have 1 over radical 3, rationalize the fraction, and you get radical 3 over 3, which is approximately 0.5774. Um, and so again, the tangent of 30 degrees is always 0.5774. Now you can calculate all these things like this, or you can use the button on your calculator. Praise Jesus for the button on your calculator. So now we're going to take this to a real world application. I've got a ladder and uh, the ladder leans against the house, and it's 20 feet up the house that the ladder contacts the house, and it's six feet out that the feet of the ladder are resting on the ground. And uh, we're gonna use the, the uh, relationships here of opposite and adjacent, and we're gonna say, we're gonna state the decimal approximations of the sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle formed by the ladder and level ground. Opposite, 20 over adjacent, six, that's gonna be angle A. Um, so, First thing they're going to do is use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the length of the hypotenuse, which is actually something that very soon you won't need to use anymore because as soon as you have an angle, you can calculate all the lengths of the angle. So enjoy Pythagorean while he's hanging out. Um, C squared equals 6 squared plus 20 squared, 36 plus 400, 436, square root of which in a decimal approximation is 20.88 feet. So AC here, the length of this hypotenuse, is 20.88 feet. Now I can use that um, and I can get the sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, 20 over four over radical 436. I have to rationalize that before you can do it, but 0.9578 would be the answer there. So the sine of this angle is 0.9578. Um, the cosine will be 6 over radical 436, and again, you'd need to rationalize that first, but then 0 0.2873 is the decimal approximation. And then opposite over adjacent 20 over 6 is going to be 3.333. So these are the, the ratios, the trigonometric ratios for that triangle that we have formed. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Otherwise, I'll see you in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.